Welcome back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Pillars of Eternity 2. Where we left off last time, we confronted Aethys, he saved our lives against Megrin. Um, we also saw Andra try and take him down and that didn't work either because Aethys is a pretty badass god, all things considered. Um, we have been asked to join either the Hawana people, Thrawatayan people, or the Principi people. So we have some things to decide. So, it's to be Ukaizo, the last great arena of this contest. If you believe that sort of thing. Maya glances away, sniffing. Planting a flag in the sands of Ukaizo is a great way to hang a target on your back. Afraid of danger all of a sudden? I just want to know that we're doing this for the right reason. So far, I'm unconvinced. Until I see Ukaizo for myself, it's a bedtime story. Let the poets hang their hopes on a dream. Rawatai's navy should be better than this. Takehu folds his arms and watches carefully. Okaizo means something different to everyone. All the more reason to get there first. If only to prove them all wrong at once. Thanks for letting me squawk in your ear like a Shiza after too much shark meat. I needed that. Maya sighs and cracks her neck with both hands. Let's be off then. You. Okaizo. We are actually going to Okaizo. Takehu turns his colorless gaze towards you, unfocused but full of concern. The tribes will look to me to bridge our past and our future. A heavy responsibility, I say. This should empower you, not paralyze you. For the praise they showered on Ngati's Chosen. Until now, it all seemed an empty gesture. Never a promise that I could fulfill. And I am no one's savior. It is not for an artist to save the tribes, I say. To work miracles. I want the tribes to grow on their own. My people deserve better than the promises of a handsome fish and his goddess mother. Ukaizo will show us the way. The tribes will find themselves again. He touches the spot on his forehead, his gaze unfocused with a momentary sense of awe. I would discover what our ancestors forgot. The covenant is more important than ever. Learn what you can from Akaisu, but let the tribes find their own way. I will give it thought. There is time enough for that, at least. He nods, weighing your words with care. Ukaizo should be the discovery of our lifetime. With the trading companies and the Principi ready to descend on each other, I wish the island had kept its secrets a while longer. He lets out a weary sigh. The world around you darkens, and once again you feel an insistent tug for your attention, the pull centering from Takeu's soul. It pains me to see my boy so conflicted. Questions tear at his heart, and the ache reaches me even here. Undra props her jaw on her fist and regards you coolly. He so longs for his independence, but his people will not relinquish his destiny without a fight. Her lips part with a secret smile. Empires have fallen since I favored the Juana with power and wisdom. How they wield it is their choice. Just see that my boy comes to no harm. Before you have a chance to react, Andra claps her hands and your surroundings assert themselves once more. There is much to consider, and little time to decide our course. I fear that we will see the path before us before we are ready to walk it. Let's be off then. Alright, so... We've done some things. Apparently the Valian Trading Company wants to talk to us, and so does the... Rawatayan Royal Deadfire Company. A lost quest we're just gonna kind of ignore for now. Ooh, we need to go hand this in. Sacred Stair. We need to go hand in that bounty. That's at least something we can do without causing any sort of rift to appear. Sacred Stair. Let's just go straight there. I can't remember where we're supposed to go there. I do want to do more Valian Trading Company stuff because I want to do more of that Animancer quest line involving the teleporter. Did Kana ever get to meet Ishii? Apparently, a great beast has been sighted in the waters around Port Maji. I'm gonna go check that out. Oh, you weren't there for the White Flood. Wait, wait, wait. Ishii can purge his whole intestine at once if he's feeling ornery. Ew. Kana never wore that hat again. I think it's him we have to turn in this quest to. Hunter, do you come to serve your coin bond? I do. Okaro folds her arms and studies you. 
Give the head. His flames have been extinguished. There is great power in a promise kept. And great rewards. Okaru hefts a mighty sack of coins and deposits deposits it in your arms without hesitation. You have served your coin bond with distinction. Go and line your pockets with riches exchanged for promises fulfilled. I will do the same. Pleasure doing business. Alright, well that's all of our little mini quests. Uh, we should probably sell things before we leave. Because we probably have at least 100,000 gold. Or more worth of just random junk items sitting in our inventory. And I went the wrong way. That's the way we want to go. And we can go back to our real weapons now, I guess. Oops, that's not what I meant to do either. Uh, where'd he go? Yes. Weapon set one. All right, let's go supply it first, and we can go here and stash and weapons and sell, sell, sell. sell, sell. Uh, that was too many. There we go. We have 24 Coral Naga Swords, Jesus. Uh, that was one too many again. Don't want to sell that. And all of those. We're already over a hundred thousand gold, by the way. Actually, we might be closer to 200,000 gold by the time this is all said and done. Maybe more, because we have armor to sell too. Maybe 300,000. Alright, that's all of our weapons at least. Just over 300,000 gold. 324,000 gold. That's a lot of money. We are super rich now, by the way. Like, ridiculously rich. We could give ourselves better captain's quarters. Or a menagerie. I'll buy one menagerie, only because I don't know what it does. I'm kind of curious. I'll buy one captain's quarters too, because... We have so much money, it doesn't matter anymore. Alright. How do I use these items? That's another good question. Let's be on the boat screen. Mm, no, no. Okay, what if we go like this? Because I hope that a menagerie will let us just put all of our pets in there. That would look kind of nice on the ship. Not exactly the most safe way to keep them around, mind you, but still. We have an important missive from Captain Ferrante. My dearest Watcher, a god with an agenda tends to put things into perspective. Now more than ever, it is imperative we commandeer the floating hangman, if only so that we may chase Aethys to Akaizo. I have called a meeting of the Consuelo, Miss Casita. Please sail to Dunnage and join us as swiftly as the wings will bring you. Okay, I'm on my way. I was kind of hoping that they would be coddling me, so let's go do that. Although apparently there's a monster sighted by somewhere near Point Maji. We'll find it later though. And we will fast forward. There a storm in our way? No, we should be fine. Our morale is top notch right now. Uh oh. You find yourself in cold, suffocating darkness. There is a familiar weight in your hand. A lantern. It sputters to life, and the world shifts into focus. A staircase spirals endlessly below you. With nowhere else to go, you start down. Not a few moments have passed before you encounter a nondescript door sitting just ajar. It's unclear what lies beyond. But then, you hear the tinkle of a bell, high and sweet, 
ringing in the room beyond. The sound is familiar, captivating, like the singing of stars. You step inside. A wave of blistering heat hits you. Then a sea salt wind. Divine voices boom and screech. Their words shake the platform beneath you, shake the very air around you. The gods are fighting. Lay your blame elsewhere, Wodica. I won't suffer your arguments any longer. Magrin looms large before you, an accusing finger leveled at the melted visage of Wodica. Wodica screws her mouth into a sneer. You fool! If only we had attacked him when I first proposed it. Accusations drip bitter as bile from her tongue. Shut up. Even the kith loses patience with you, Wudika. The pallid knight looks down at you, a frown etched deep in her otherwise statue-still features. I am afraid we are not at our best. The Watchers return. Perhaps we should hear what he has to say. Helia's birds chatter anxiously among themselves. Wal's many eyes alight on each god in turn. We make little enough progress on our own. They say, a wry smile contorting their alien features. That's obvious, rolling my eyes. Not for lack of trying. Feathers rise along the crest of Helia's head as she stares pointedly at Magrin. We try, but agreement eludes us. Andra's storm-dark eyes swivel to meet yours. Is there nothing we can do? Helia asks. Magrin glances at the pallid knight from the corner of her eye. After a thoughtful pause, she speaks. The time has come for us to seize the power we have long left untouched and absorb our scattered children. Magrin says. Andra nods, her lure bobbing bright. Terrible though it would be, perhaps you are right. Didn't Mugren mention this once before? I did, and I was scolded like a child for my terrible audacity. A curl of steam rises from her nose. The pallid knight looks on, impassive. Should we be killed in our god forms, we can possess you, our godlike children. Or should we face a force too powerful to stand against, we can absorb your souls, granting us additional strength. You mean Pelagina, Takehu, and me? You, Ilya's wayward daughter, Andra's precious son, and thousands of others. Yes, we would all die. The Pallid Knight speaks with the chilly temperance possessed only by the God of Death. But the time for that plan has long passed us by. The Pallid Knight says, are we achieving nothing for ourselves? Not a single secret retained? Not a solitary mystery? Wal demands, their voices steadily rising. Magrin elbows one of Wal's floating eyes away. Aethys will lay bare our every secret soon enough. What is one or two revealed now? But we get ahead of ourselves. First, the Watcher must get to Ukaizo, and that will be a trial all its own. Magrin says. Right, because I haven't had one of those lately. Magrin smiles. And more are yet to come. The Guardian of Ukaizo has stood watch over that place for millennia. It will not stand aside, not even for Barith's Herald. Andra says. What is it? Helia, who had been lost in quiet, anxious conversation with her birds, breaks in. It yet lives. Of course. Our progenitors crafted it. Magrin says. A pair of Helia's finches come to join Wal's floating eye. They hover just out of Magrin's reach and swoop in to poke her when she's not looking. <laughs> and the Watcher will be forced to reckon with it if he wishes to confront Aethys. Magrin says. The birds at last linger too long, and Magrin slaps them away. They burst into a cloud of essence then reform, and fly in a screeching chorus back to Helia. This guardian is but one more thing that will fall before me. Ah, there is that heady mix of kith ferocity and hubris Magrin so admires. Wodica says, her thin lips curled in distaste. Go prepared, Watcher. 
The Guardian will not stand aside, not even for the Herald of Barath. Helia says. Won't Aethys take care of it? It is not one of Galloway's mindless beasts. It has a heart and a mind, and it will throw neither away to oppose Aethys. Andra says. And Aethys will not fight the creature. It would prove little more than a distraction for him, especially as my tsunami and Margren's volcano couldn't stop him. Andra says. Why can't you just get rid of it? It is its own creature, Watcher. It does not listen to us. Andra says. So kill it, you're literally gods. There is another topic we have yet to address. Tell me, Watcher, where do you stand? The Pallid Knight holds up one gauntleted hand, and the other gods fall silent. What do you think of Aeothus's scheme to destroy the wheel? The Pallid Knight asks. Hmm. I still don't understand what all this means. What will happen when Aeothus destroys the wheel? The Pallid Knight spreads wide her hands. Think of the beyond as a reservoir, the in-between as storm clouds, and souls as rain. When a living thing dies, its soul enters the in-between. And when the in-between grows full, it releases souls into the beyond, where they wait to be redistributed to new bodies, new lives. The wheel is the process by which souls are moved from the in-between to the beyond, from the rain cloud to the reservoir, and from the reservoir into the living world. Without the wheel to mediate the transfer and redistribution of souls, the souls of all who die remain in the in-between. And without souls to fill it, the beyond gradually empties, trapping all of the remaining souls in existence in the in-between. When the beyond is empty and the last creature on Aeora dies, that is the end of everything. It is Rimergon's future, the one he wants for us. How does that affect the gods? Soul essence sustains us. We feed off it, off the little fragments you mortal kith shed like snakeskin as you pass into your next life. Without sustenance, we starve as any mortal might. We die, and leave a great silence behind. An eternal emptiness from which nothing is born. I nod. You see, then, that we cannot help but argue. The fate of life hangs in the balance, and we are as ever beholden to our natures. Tell us, Watcher. Where do you stand? Ah, <sighs> man. We can no longer count on the gods for guidance. Kith will have to figure this out on our own. Perhaps you misunderstand. This is not a test you will overcome on your own. Aethys intends to change the fundamental structure of life and death. Maybe that's for the best. Does that not frighten you? You, Kith, who are most vulnerable? It does. But I will not let fear rule me. Aethys loves the mortals more than any of us. He has always been their greatest champion. He believes Kith will rise to his challenge. I am not so sure, but I look forward to watching them try. Magrin says. How did Aethys fool you all? You're the most powerful beings in Aeora. He found our blind spot and exploited it admirably. By the time we even had a hint of what it was he intended, it was already too late to stop him. Magrin says. If we still had our bodies, we could oppose him. Wodica balls her bony hands into fists and glares long at Andra. Do not lay your blame on me. We set them aside after I killed Abaddon, it is true, but you did not fight the decision then. Andra says. She turns her back on Wodica then and looks instead to the Pallid Knight. What if Aethys is right and Kith succeed in rebuilding the wheel? What then? Andra asks. I don't know. But aren't you curious to find out? Wal grins. Always, Watcher. And what if they fail? Helia asks. Then they die. And so do we. Andra says. We have to help them. Helia's voice rises, near to panic. Wodica drives her fist into her hand. Help them! We should finally bring them to heal! The Pallid Knight raises a hand and stares at Wodica until she falls silent. Watcher, Aeothus yet values your counsel. 
the Pallid Knight says. The Pallid Knight's eyes bore into yours. An impassioned plea from the Hound of Aethys may still temper his actions. Confront him at Ukaizo. I will make him heed my words. A bark of dry, bitter laughter escapes Wodica. You believe you will succeed where I have failed? Ha! The future of Kith and the gods rests on your shoulders, Watcher. So I hope that you do. The Pallid Knight's stern countenance softens. Time moves swiftly away from us now. The Pallid Knight spreads her hands before her. Go, Watcher. The Pallid Knight says. Do what you must. The edges of your vision begin to dim. Like a sun setting, twilight encroaches on your mind. I will stare off, brooding into the darkness and say nothing. The Pallid Knight conjures a blinding white light in her palm that swiftly grows to engulf the room. Then, the crack of thunder rends the air and you feel the floor drop out beneath you. You come to flat on your back, staring at an all too familiar ceiling, alone once again. Okay, cool. Well, we made it somewhat through the god conversation safely. No one killed us immediately, so that's a plus. You wish. Um, up top. We are still in fast move mode, as you can see by our characters flailing around, sort of creepily. Anyways, let's also take a look here. How do we do this? Oh, I see, we just I got. Yes, captain's quarters and a menagerie. We are now decked out, apparently. Uh, how do I go into my ship? I want to take a look at the menagerie. I wonder if all of our animals are in there. I'm really curious. For some reason, the music just kicked in. That's our crew. I'm going downstairs. I'm guessing the menagerie is going to be down there. And let's take a look at our captain's quarters, too. It doesn't look a whole lot different. I guess it's a little bit nicer. Fair enough. Did you know you See, there's all our animals. You carry. Dispose of it at once. So cute. Okay, we can leave now. It's good to know that we have a lovely place for our pets to go during battle when we get shot with cannons. Wait, where are we? Okay, I see where we are. Off to Dunnage now, although we're almost out of time on the video, so I mean... That god conversation took a little bit long. I should be cruising into sight soon. There we go. Ooh, I'm gonna make it. We might have time to do the... Conversation here with the Principi. I do like the Principi. I'm gonna align with them, I think. I like them more than the Rautaian. I've been loyal to you a long time, Ferrante, but I cannot abide this. Over here, my friend. What is it? Diverus, is it settled now? I do not like having my hand forced by some rogue god. I love his armor. I want armor that looks like that. Indeed, the vote has been cast. There can be no dispute. The trader Aldis will hang. Your vote of confidence is appreciated, my Consuelo. Rest assured. You have made the right decision. The Black Pog sees we have. What a fucking farce! Mark my words, Councilman. Your souls will be damned for this scheme. The captain rubs the handle of her gun, but wisely doesn't draw it. Do not forget your promise, Furante. With Eldis out of the way, you will sail us to Ukaizo, well before the Huana, the Valen Trading Company, or any others can plunder it. The god will lead us there and the floating hangman will navigate the storms. Ferrante nods at the two council members before noticing you. Watcher, your timing is impeccable as always. The highest ranking member of the Council of Captains tugs at the frilled ends of his sleeves before offering you a charming smile. We have just concluded a vote of phenomenal importance. Indeed. Blast this! You can outvote me, but you can't make me stay and watch. Mad Marina spits at the floor of a chair before storming away. One of our Consuelo members, Captain Aldis, has been charged and found guilty of those crimes, punishable by death. He clears his throat before your scrutiny, and those crimes would be... Defiance. On several past occasions, Aldis has willfully dismissed the mandates of the Consuelo. He ticks the count on his finger. I nod. Negligence. 
too often, Aldis has outright neglected her responsibilities to the Consuelo. When a meeting is called, the presence of all members is required. Nod. Excessive cruelty. Aldis and her new bloods often commit extreme violence in pursuit of financial gain. This drives our foes to take harsher measures against us. I nod. Sedition, which you witnessed firsthand when Aldis negotiated with our enemies without the consent of the Consuelo. She has single-handedly endeavored to spark a civil war within the Principi on multiple occasions. Fair enough. Triumph flares in Ferrante's eyes, and his next intake of breath is shaky with anticipation. And, worst of all... He waggles his thumb. Betrayal. Aldis sacrificed an entire crew of Principi in an ill-fated attempt to lure out the floating hangman so that she might captain it. This Consuelo session is now concluded. Watcher, might I have a word with you in confidence? Yeah, okay. What happened that Margran's teeth changes everything? We must acquire the floating hangman if we've any hope to reach Ukaizo before Aeothus destroys everything. Which brings me to my current problem. Go on. Somehow, Aldis has uncovered a means to summon the floating hangman. But she is hunkered within her stronghold of Fort Deadlight. Myself and the others of the Consuelo must lay siege to get to her. However, you have a means of entry to the fortress. His eyes narrow, ruthless, calculating. I need what she knows before I can hang her. Obtain it for me, and I will grant you her seat on the Consuelo. I'll talk to her. Sail to Fort Deadlight and seize the answers which Aldis has secreted for her own gain. I might have to turn on them later, which I will probably do because I don't want to be beholden to the Principi. I want to rule the Principi with an iron fist. That's our goal in life. We want to rule the whole Deadfire Peninsula. I don't want to be the Watcher or like a captain. I want to be Emperor Eltimar of the Deadfire Archipelago. That's what I want to be. Captain just isn't the title that I want to keep with forever. Emperor, King. God King? I mean, that would be okay too. Since I am a God born? God? Yeah. Death God chosen? Whatever. You know, the thing that we are. I want to be that. I'd even settle for like. Baron? No, we don't. A Baron needs a king, and I don't want to be under a king. What else could we call ourselves? Emperor, King. Illustrious ruler. I'm surprised that she just, she just let us come right in. That's kind of weird. I would imagine that she would uh, not be so keen to just let us wander straight into her base. But oh well. Maybe we can kill her, and then also kill Ferrante, and then we'll go kill all the Rautian people too. And then we'll kill all the Juana and all the Valian people. There'll be nobody left to oppose us in the end. Who's Merc? Looking to share more tipple and conversation? I might be enough to oblige. How are things around Fort Deadlight? Quieter than usual. I guess I've you to blame for that. She shrugs, lifting her mug. Bleed my guts if it wasn't worth it, though. Um, speaking of. She blinks up at you as if trying to clear her sight. I don't suppose you're looking for another Sodom on that boat of yours? Grab your stuff, claim a bunk. Wait, really? She blinks then straightens, more or less, and salutes. Aye aye, Captain, see you aboard. She winks and with a hand holding her head, her hat to her head, she runs from the room. Oh, damn, she can be a monk, or a monk rogue, or a monk fighter. Hmm, good question. I think a monk rogue would be really good. All that backs. Does backs have damage? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Let's make her a shadow dancer. We're now a recruiter. I'm not going to put her in my actual group, though, currently. We're busy with other things. But that's going to be the end of our video. Before we go confront Aethys, or uh, Aethys, uh we are out of time. So, we're going to end off here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, Please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time. Take care.